Hey, change agents. Oh, welcome. Today we're talking about 11 content ideas that nonprofit organizations can implore to stay relevant and to um, get your brand out there, known to the community locally and nationally. So 11 things, because I always get from nonprofit organizations, oh, we don't know what to post. We don't know how to create content. How do you create content as a nonprofit? What are you going to talk about? No one wants to hear you meet, beat the mission to death. Well, you don't have to. There are tons of different things that you can talk about that can be exciting, engaging, and want make people want to come back and watch some more and engage with your organization some more. And you can create brand awareness and differentiate yourself from all the other nonprofit organizations doing these 11 things. So let's get into it. If this is your first time watching, my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TVA Consulting, where we help our clients develop the systems and processes needed to build and grow a profitable, sustainable, and compliant infrastructure so that they can achieve their mission and realize their vision. But most of all, we help our clients to create impact in the communities that they serve. So 11 nonprofit content ideas. Number one, <clears throat> so this one takes a lot of people outside their comfort zone because they don't like being on camera. There are a lot of people who are so camera shy. It's just as bad as telling them to get up and make a public speech, right? <laughs> Most people, their stomach's getting a knot. They want to throw up. They want to go to the bathroom. Let's be honest. It is a nerve wracking for a lot of people, but you really do have to get over that fear um, because you are a nonprofit leader and you're going to have to engage with the community on a regular basis. So getting over that fear, doing whatever you need to, to get over that fear is pivotal to the success of your organization. So that is talk about your why. There has to be a reason why you decided to start a nonprofit organization versus a for-profit organization. And everyone knows it's harder to run a nonprofit organization than it is to run a for-profit organization because you are expected to um, give away some of your services for free or at discounted rates, even though you're offering comparable services to a for-profit organization. So there has to be something within you, some type of drive, some type of um, force within you that made you choose to go the nonprofit route versus the for-profit route. Tell that story. That is a compelling story for people to know why did you choose this route versus going for-profit where you can control how much income you can make. You can control the money in a nonprofit organization. You're getting a salary. You cannot control how much money you make on a yearly basis because that is that decision is made for you by the board members. So tell that story. And you can tell that story in what I like to call the soap opera form, where is in that you don't tell the whole story all at once. You break that story up over like a five-day period. So that's five days of content. You only need to have five days. You can take weekends off. It's fine, right? So you need to have at least five days of content. So you want to break that story up into a sole purpose. So people keep coming back. Make sure that you leave them with a cliffhanger so that they keep coming back to hear the rest of your story. But talking about your why in video form, and you can do it in email too, but video is always better. But you can do it in email too, doing it in a sole proper form, very engaging. When people get to know your why, they tend to buy in to your organization a lot more than if they don't know why you actually started this nonprofit. The second one is have your staff talk about their why as well. When you go to work for a nonprofit organization, there has to be a compelling reason for that as well, because you can do the same thing in a corporate setting, right? Or, pri or another private entity versus a nonprofit where you're probably going to get paid a lot less in most cases than you would in a corporate setting or another private firm. So why is your staff here? Why did they choose your organization to decide to work for? What makes them come to work every day? What is about your mission, vision, and values that attracted them to coming to work for your organization? What do they hope that they're going to be able to give back to the community in the position that they're in. 
These are compelling stories as well. A lot of times people connect with your mission and come to work for the nonprofit because they've experienced something that your nonprofit, a problem that your nonprofit is solving. So getting those stories out for the staff members that actually want to share it or volunteers too, that actually want to share their story is a great way to pull up people's heartstrings and then they open their purse strings. Your board members can get in on this too. So it's not just for you, the founder of the organization, you can get everybody involved in this why storytelling portion of content creation, right? And again, this can be done in the form of a video or videos that you put on your social media pages. It can be done you can put it on your YouTube page, you can create a podcast out of it, and you can create blogs and email sequences out of these stories. Okay, so content, like you have content for times, <laughs> just from these two things, right? You have at least, say it's just you, the founder, you have an administrative assistant and three board members, you're talking about seven, eight weeks worth of content right there. Okay, so I don't want to hear anyone say again, oh, I can't figure out how to create content. And these content, the, these two forms of content, whether it's your story or your staff and board members um, content can be reused. You just don't put it up one time and then that's it. You know, maybe a year later, you recycle the content. Repurposing content is fantastic. I am definitely into repurposing content. I'm not about working hard. I'm about working smart. Okay. So I am notorious for repurposing my content as long as it's still relevant. Okay. The next one, number three is challenges post. What does challenges post mean? It means post about the challenges that your organization is going through at the time. We don't think that every organization is just fantastic and nothing is going wrong. Your organization is having a problem that you think that someone in the community may be able to help with. Talk about it. Let people know. No one wants you to put up a brave front and act like everything is perfect. We know everything is that perfect. And if you try to put up that facade, it's a real turnoff. So just be real about what's going on and letting people know so that someone can step up to the plate and possibly help you out of the bind that you're in. But be very authentic in letting people know what is going on. Those We all have challenges. For-profit businesses, nonprofit businesses, we all have challenges on a regular basis. Letting, as a nonprofit organization, letting people know the challenges that your organization are currently having will help you to... Um, Garner some support financially or in volunteer um, or voluntary support. The fourth one is project pros. Let people know what you're working on. What projects are you currently working on in your nonprofit to help create impact within the, the community? How is that project being run? You know, how long is the project? Talk about it. They're not going to know what's going on in your organization unless you tell them and telling them what's going on because you should be transparent. So transparency in telling them what's going on, that is content for times to come because there should always be something going on in your organization. So making sure that you are sharing these things with your public, again, via the different forms of um, social media or media platforms, period, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, podcasting, your email, your website, <clears throat> whichever you choose, making sure you're transparent and letting people know, of course, in the most professional form, what's going on can garner you the support that you need. It can help you with your branding. It can help you with positioning yourself as the go-to organization for whatever it is that you're doing. All right. Opportunities post. What is an opportunities post? Opportunities are things that opportunities that you have going on within your organization. Maybe you have a job opening. Let's talk about it. What is this job about? What does it entail? What type of person are you looking for? What type of referrals are you looking for? That's an opportunity post. Maybe you're looking for some volunteers for a specific project that you're working on talking about that as well. Or maybe 
you don't even have, it doesn't even have to be your organization. It could be an organization that you have a collaborative effort with and they're looking for someone. You can talk about that either as well. You can talk about that as well. And again, using various platforms to do that. See content. We have lots of content going on here. Um, story posts. Stories, people love to tell stories. So we talked about telling your story, telling your um, the stories of your volunteer, your staff, and your board of directors. Now we can tell stories about the people that we are helping, the people who you're creating impact for in the community. You just have to make sure that you get waivers from them, legal waivers, so you know, to tell those stories, but you can get them on camera telling their stories. You can also make that into a sole proper form format. You can have them on your podcast. You can have um, flyers with their stories. You can have commercials with their stories. I mean, there are so many things you can do with the stories of the people that you are helping and serving in the community. And if you're doing your job right, you should have a ton of people coming in and out of your door. So you should never be short of stories, especially if you are actually creating impact. So let's stop, talk about that. So you should have tons of stories that you should be able to share with your audience to show that you're, cre you're doing what you say you're doing, which is creating impact. And this is good for getting grants. It's good for getting new donors. It's good for capital campaigns. It's just good marketing, period. Okay. And it's great content. So get those stories together, get those waivers together and start telling these stories. People want to know that you're creating impact, that you're not just out here sucking up the money and doing some illegal stuff with it. So get your stories together. A goal post. What are your goals? Okay. What goals do you have set for the organization this year, this month, this week, this day? <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. You should have your strategic plan together. So you should not have a shortage of a shortage of goals. Share those goals with your community. Share those goals with your audience. What that does, again, is to help with your branding. It helps with getting donors. It helps with getting volunteers. It helps with getting community support. If they know what your goals are, they can see if their own goals align with your organization goals and see how they can um, give you help. Remember, we talked about in the previous um a previous episode, we talked about um, communication and how communication is pivotal to the success of your organization. And if you're not clear and precise in your communication, no one is going to know what you want. So articulating those goals is a great way to let people know what your wants and needs are. Interviews. These interviews can be with community partners. It's great to do community partner interviews so that people see that you are not a one-man ship. You're not out here just doing it all by yourself and thinking that you're that great. Making sure you do these community partnership interviews, how you're collaborating together, how the collaboration starts, how you intend to continue to collaborate, what each person is getting out of the collaboration is great. That is great content, and that helps you to get more collaborative and strategic partners to come into the fold in your organization. So if you're truly looking to grow within your community and make more connections, talk about the connections you already have. That's great content. I like to know who my um, nonprofit organizations are working with, who are they collaborating with, so that I know that you are actually out here trying to make um, partnerships and to you know help others that you're not selfish and that you know that you cannot um you cannot provide everything that your clients need and in order to give them holistic services you need to collaborate and partner with other organizations that offer the services that you don't there are people out here who are smart and they're looking at that so making sure you do those collaborative interviews, even interviews with clients, interviews with um, staff members. So staff members can tell their why and you can have interviews with other things that are going on within the, the organization. So interviews are a great way for content creation as well. Events. Nonprofits always have some type of event coming up because you're always looking for funding. 
So talk about the events that you have coming up, not just post it alone. Yes, posting it is good, but actually talking about it. Why are you having the event? What do you intend to get out of this event? Um, what is the goal that you're setting for fundraising for this event? What does the agenda look like? Who's going to be the keynote speaker? Having keynote interview speak, um, interviews as content. Uh, there's so many things you can do with events to create content. You don't have shortage of content. I just talked about a year's worth of content already. Let's be honest, okay? So making sure that you do these event posts. Stop being camera shy. Get in front of the camera. Just act like yourself. Like I'm acting like myself. Now this is who I am. I'm very animated. Do that. Get in front of the camera and start talking. You don't have to be the only person. Like you have a whole staff of people. You have board members. Y'all take turns, okay? If you don't have a designated communications person. And it's good to see everyone else who's in the organization and what roles they play and what their personality is like. Because a lot of times your donors are not going to ever be able to see you in person. So being able to see you through the camera gives you a good gist of who you're actually dealing with. And that too helps to build that rapport, helps to build that engagement and relationship. And when people feel invested, they're willing to donate. When they don't feel invested, when they feel like you are over there and they're over here, that's where things get kind of wonky. And that goes right into the other one. Donors. If you have people who are regular donors, showcase them. That is content as well. You have to get clearance from these people to um, tell their stories or to have them come and tell their stories because not every donor wants to be put on front street. Let's be honest. So you need to make sure you're asking your donors before you showcase them anywhere or say they, their names at all. So be very cognizant of that. Not everyone wants to be put on front street. So don't do it unless you have permission from the donors. But there's some donors who will be willing to come in and do an interview or do a short video telling why they supported the organization and what they hope their funds will be able to accomplish. Um, doing donor interviews is another way or have them write a short article those are different ways. And you notice I didn't really put blog posts here because everybody is like, oh, a blog post. But that's another way as well. So these are some of the ways. And the last way that you can um, create content, well, the, the, the content ideas is weekly and monthly impact. So you should be gathering data on a consistent basis. Every day, you should be gathering some type of data within your organization. So showcasing that. How many people did you help this week? What areas did the serv of services or products did you um, provide? So did they come in for help with food and you were able to send them to get some um, SNAP or some child care services, or you were able to send them to a, an educational GED program, or you were able to send them to a health care services, all of that stuff. You can tell people, people are interested in numbers. There are people, some people who are very number driven and they want to know what type of impact are you creating in your organization on a weekly or monthly basis. Remember as a nonprofit organization, you're not really supposed to be hiding anything. It's not like you own an LLC or anything like that. You're supposed to be transparent. It's a publicly owned company and you're supposed to be transparent with what is going on. So part of your transparency could be giving weekly and monthly updates via your social media, via email, um, about what type of impact you are creating within the community that you serve. So those are the 11 points that, or 11 content ideas that you can create for your nonprofit organization. So as you see, there is no reason for any nonprofit organization to say that they are unable or they don't know what type of content to put out there so that they can stay in the front minds of ev in front of everyone, that their brand, their um, mission, their vision, and their values can stay in front of the people that they're hoping to serve and the people that they're hoping will be community partners and donors to their organization. And again, all of this content and all of this marketing that you'll be doing through these 11 content creation ideas will also help you 
to solidify your place in the community. And when you go to apply for grants, it'll make it a lot easier. So I hope this helps somebody. Again, my name is Tracy V. Allen, owner of TVA Consulting. If you need our services and you want to reach out to me, my information is at the bottom of the screen, www.tva tvacon.com, tvacon.com, or you can call me at 860-478-0, that is not my number, you, you can call me at 860-890-6615, again, that's 860-8061, and create some content.